ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and guess what guys, there's more AMD news today. So, there's going to be a lot of AMD official announcements at Computex, which is coming up really soon. And as such, there's more and more rumors and leaks coming out surrounding a variety of AMD stuff. So I keep kind of like going to make videos like this and then something new comes out. Uh, so I just thought today I'd make it sort of covering all the more recent AMD news. So let's first start with their Epic CPUs. So these are the server CPUs. Now you might be thinking, oh Kevin, that's boring. Why do I care about the server parts? It's worth paying attention to mainly for the fact that it doesn't really matter what happens to Intel as far as the desktop CPUs go. I mean, it does matter, but in terms of their profits, it's the Xeons where Intel makes a fortune. They make so much money in the server market, and that's why AMD is very keen to target it. And we have some more information about their upcoming Epic CPUs, the 64 part and the 32 core part. So let's take a look at the 64 core first. The article reads, this CPU, which is an engineering sample, has the following code name, which is like a face roll on the keyboard. At least two pieces of information can be discerned from the code name, which is that it has a base clock speed of 1.4 gigahertz and a turbo of 2.2 gigahertz. Unfortunately, we don't know the TDP rating for this chip as of yet, nor the final clock speeds that we can expect to see on the 64 core epics. What we can tell so far, however, is that these chips will pack a gigantic performance punch. So that looks pretty good for the 64 core. The 32 core is quite interesting because you can see there the clock speeds are not much higher than the 64 core. You would expect them to be a decent amount higher. Though this could be like a low power part or something like that. Uh, this is early days as well. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. But yeah, as I said earlier, this will be good for AMD. If they can get these out, these would be good for uh, in terms of profits for them with money then they can take and put into R&D for other things And this would really hurt Intel too in terms of their profit So it's good to see uh, these AMD server CPUs looking pretty nice there So let's move on and talk about the APUs then This is something that will interest a lot more of you guys will like expect so And that's the specs of the Ryzen 3000 APUs The 3200G and the 3400G so the specs for these are looking pretty solid there. You can see that just like with the last generation, they're staying with the previous generation architecture. So what I mean by that is the 2200G and 2400G were 14 nanometer CPUs, even though they're a part of the Ryzen 2000. They're actually just original Zen architecture CPUs, whereas the rest of the 2000 series was Zen Plus. And that's carrying over to the 3000 series with the 3200G and 3400G being Zen Plus. We do see good upgrades there in terms of the clock speeds. That 3200G, that's going to be good. I mean, I really like the 2200G already, but the 3200 there with those increased clock speeds, that's going to pack a bit of a punch. And uh, I'm liking this. A lot of people disregard the APUs or sort of overlook them. I don't think that's fair because if you're a budget buyer or you're not using it for gaming, you might just be using it for other things. A good little APU like that 3200G can be a great buy. And when I tested the 2200G, I was very impressed. And it did way better than anything Intel is offering at the same price, or even quite a bit more expensive. Uh, so I, I'm impressed by this. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Looking at these on paper, this looks really solid. But of course, we won't know until we actually test them out. But performance-wise, I expect this to be like an incremental upgrade given that the stream processes are the same, core counts the same. Uh, it's just the clock speeds that have really gone up, but that will result in a decent performance bump there. Lastly, I want to talk about PCIe 4.0. And it's looking like you'll be able to use it with your X470 or B450 motherboards if you do a BIOS update when you go to run them with your Ryzen 3000 CPUs if you decide to upgrade to that. This is because the PCI Express goes through the CPU for your time 16 slot anyway. That'll be the only one that will be compatible. All your other slots go through the chipset, so that won't be possible. But this is quite a cool thing, the fact that you'll be able to take advantage of this with your older motherboards. That being said, X570 so far has quite a few other decent features that may warrant an upgrade. 
I would say it'd probably be better if you came from like X370 to X570. That would probably be a really solid upgrade there. The motherboards themselves also seem very, very overbuilt. Uh, this is going to be very good for overclocking. It's not to say that there weren't some pretty serious X470s and X370s, but X570 is really up the game, at least from what I've seen so far. So yeah, this is really nice, and this is going to be good for a lot of people out there. I'm really looking forward to seeing these X570 boards at Combitex. I have really high hopes for them, especially from the pictures I've seen so far. But of course, we won't really know how they do or how good they are until we start testing them with the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. So just like everything now, we have to take it with a bit of grain of salt. Uh, so far, the leak has only sort of confirmed that this would be the case with the Gigabyte motherboards, although I imagine all of them will do this. But we'll just have to see as we get closer to the time. And that's how I'm going to leave this video. So just a few more sort of updates surrounding AMD and AMD news in general. I'm going to be, of course, I'm going to Computex. I mean, I'm here in Taipei, so of course I can. But I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant now about the Ryzen 3000 CPUs just because it feels like a lot of people have overhyped them to an extraordinary degree. I do think they're going to be very good. I mean, on paper and in theory, they should be very good. So I do have hopes of that. I do think sometimes, though, that you guys overhype them a lot. And as we've seen previously, a lot of times people tend to... This isn't really AMD's fault. It's more people tend to overhype AMD products to such an extraordinary degree that they're then disappointed by them, even if the products themselves are still good, like still really good. I see that happen quite often. Um, it was the case, I mean, it's been a case for the GPUs for a long time, but even the case for Ryzen 2000, a lot of people, it, it didn't feel like it met their expectations, but I think that was more that people's expectations were just far too high for Ryzen 2000, uh, considering the huge leap AMD saw with the, the original Ryzen CPUs. So just, just temper your expectations a little bit. I don't want to see another repeat. Um, but as I said, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that they're going to be bad because I do really think they are going to be good. Just maybe not as crazy good as a lot of you guys are commenting in my videos. So I just wanted to uh, address that. But as always, I throw it to you guys. What do you think? Uh, do you think they're being overhyped or you think, I don't know, maybe you think they're being underhyped. I really doubt that. But do you think they're being overhyped and, and realistically... Uh, how do you think the Ryzen 3000 CPUs, the uh, Zen 2 CPUs, will perform compared to their Ryzen 2000 counterparts? I'd really like to know. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.